So today is the day where we get to publish all of the benchmarks for NVIDIA's new RTX 3080. And I'm pretty sure your sub boxes are filled with reviews of this new graphics card, but this isn't your typical review. Because as we were monitoring the comments from our RTX 3000 series coverage, one thing was pretty obvious. You might want an RTX 3080 right now, but with everything that's kind of going around the world right now, you might not have the money to invest in a brand new gaming system featuring this GPU. Actually, a lot of people are still sporting a GTX 1080 or a 1080 Ti. They probably might have skipped the RTX 2000 series and feel like now might be a good time to upgrade. But do you actually need a top to bottom gaming PC facelift or can you actually get away with an older CPU? Because the last thing that anyone wants is to upgrade their older GPU and then get caught up with processor bottlenecks, which then limits the performance of their brand new investment. So that's what this video is gonna cover. Uh, basically, we're gonna test this new GPU on a new 2020 system, but also walk you through some of the improvements you can potentially get with a system that's three years old. Look, I'll admit, we're also a bit guilty of setting unrealistic expectations for our viewers, since we usually test on the fastest possible gaming systems to eliminate bottlenecks. But here, doing that would just confirm the obvious. The RTX 3080 is the fastest GPU you can buy right now. I mean, look at these 1440p and 4K numbers on a system with a 10900K installed. The $700 RTX 3080 Founders Edition can literally beat the pants off of a custom Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti. In most cases, it isn't even close. The 3080's 1% lower frame rates are about as good as the 2080 Ti's averages, which is pretty mind blowing since that thing was going for about a thousand bucks. The 3080 is also doing this with less memory, but the faster GDDR6X clocks make up for that, especially when you crank the resolution up to 4K. All in all, this represents about a 24% improvement at 1440p and about a 28% at 4K versus the RTX 2080 Ti. And if you put this up against the RTX 2080 Super, which isn't in these charts, that translates into a boost of 40% at 1440p and 53% at 4K. So yeah, RIP to those who bought a 2080 series GPU in the last few months. I feel really bad for you right now. Now those frame rates do come at the cost of higher power consumption. And no, these numbers aren't the full system, but rather taken from an interposer between the GPU, motherboard, and power supply. Most power supplies rated at 700 watts and higher should handle this without an issue, but remember, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition has a new 12-pin power connector to save space. Since there aren't any PSUs with native support for this, NVIDIA provides a dongle to adapt two standard 8-pins into it. My problem is this thing looks terrible hanging from the side of such a clean looking GPU. Luckily, some power supply manufacturers will be launching native 12 pin cables in the next few weeks. Temperatures over time were really well managed too, with the GPU never topping out above 65C and clock speeds ended up being completely consistent too. From a thermal management perspective, this is pretty impressive. As for noise, this is actually the quietest Founders Edition card we've come across. So coupled with the temperatures, NVIDIA's claims for this new cooler design do checks out. It's whisper quiet, it certainly does work out, but remember, we're testing this in an open system for a controlled environment. But I did wanna mention our first sample had some inductor wine, even at lower frame rates, but a second RTX 3080 arrived and that one was completely silent. Another thing some of you need to know is compatibility with some X299 motherboards. A few of these, like the ASUS X299 Edition 30, place their primary PCI slots quite close to the CPU socket. If the socket's bottom heatsink mounts are 35 millimeters or less from the PCI slot's top edge and your heatsink is 150 millimeters wide, the RTX 3080 won't align with the case's mounting holes. Usually this wouldn't be a problem, but the RTX 3080's backplate seems to be about 1.5 millimeters taller than anything we've seen before. But don't worry about that too much because it worked perfectly on every single AM4, LG 1100 series and TRX 40 motherboard, so that's definitely good news. So with that out of the way, let's establish a baseline and just walk you through what we've actually set up with this whole comparison. So on one hand, there's the 10900K, which certainly isn't considered the best all around CPU to buy right now, but it's undeniably the fastest in most games. We wanted to line it up against a processor someone might have rocked when the 1080 cards were around. Well, this 
is the 7700K, which launched a few months before the 1080 Ti was released. Back then, it was the absolute best gaming CPUs too, and it's still legendary today. So basically, we're taking the best from 2017 and lining up against the best from 2020. In order to give you a more accurate view of a system that you could buy back then, I'm gonna be throwing a pre overclocked GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti into the mix. So this will give you a better perspective of the performance differences between two very different generations of gaming PCs, and also if it's worth adding an RTX 3080 into a three-year-old system. And finally, the impact uh, that 1080 owners would uh, get when they switch over to Ampere. And look, this isn't meant to be a full CPU scaling analysis. That one's coming later. This one is more along the lines of an upgrade story. And basically, you know, we're finding out what gives the best bang for the buck. Just a reminder that all of these frame rates are the averages of three manual benchmark runs. And yes, that means this entire video is the end product of about 300 results. Not only that, but we wanted to focus as much as possible on newer and popular games. So I'm really sorry if you're expecting us to showcase Hitman, Tomb Raider, and Far Cry 5 benchmarks. I really am. But with that being said, let's go. So after all of that, it's pretty obvious. The RTX 3080 is just stupidly, ridiculously, insanely fast, period. But there's a lot to digest, so I'll start with the easy answers first. If you skip the first gen RTX cards and want to stay with Nvidia, now is absolutely the time to upgrade. People who spend $600 on a GTX 1080 or $700 on a GTX 1080 Ti have a comparably priced GPU that can in most cases double or even triple frame rates. And yes, I also have to mention you can run hardware accelerated ray tracing and deep learning enhancements. Those two items will become more and more important in the coming years, whether you like it or not. So the harder question is what happens if you're not rocking the latest and greatest processor in your gaming rig, or you don't wanna spend the money for one? Well, it all depends on where you're starting. If you've invested in a higher end CPU a few years ago, then congrats, this, it's a gift that keeps giving because the GPU becomes more of a bottleneck when you start increasing resolutions and detail. Uh, the 7700K and the 10900K are pretty close at 1440p, but they're neck to neck at 4K. And that's actually huge news for gamers who want to stick within a um, stricter upgrade budget without sacrificing on graphics horsepower. But with that being said, CPU bottlenecking and game engine limitations do exist. There's no avoiding them, especially since a lot of competitive online shooters fall into one of those situations. CSGO and Overwatch are great examples. Some titles are also moving towards multi-core enhancements, which tends to kneecap the 7700K and older architectures in a pretty big way, like Call of Duty, for instance. It pegged the CPU cores with the RTX 3080 installed. Meanwhile, newer games using the Unreal Engine like Jedi Fallen Order have CPU profiling that directly benefits newer processors. If you stick to an older platform, another thing you'll need to put up with is longer load times. That's right. Even with a fast NVMe SSD installed, two of the games we tested, Horizon Zero Dawn and Modern Warfare, preload shaders whenever they detect a hardware or major driver change. On the 10900K system, that process just took a few minutes, but when we switched over to the 7700K, we had to sit around for 30 minutes because it was pegging the CPU at 100% the whole time. 
So this also means that the 7700K would lag pretty far behind some of the newer options uh, from AMD, specifically if you want to use your uh, system for CPU intensive tasks like rendering or compiling projects. Now, all of those limitations would be multiplied if you brought in a lower end uh, Intel CPU, or even worse, if you're still rocking Bulldozer or a first gen Ryzen processor. Also, I'm pretty sure that most of you who are rocking a K-series processor have it overclocked. So we did overclock the 7700K to 5.1 gigahertz to see if it would close the gap between that and the 10900K. And in some cases, that's exactly what happened. I mean, sure, Modern Warfare and Jedi Fallen Order love newer CPU architectures, but CSGO saw a nice frame rate bump. Power consumption is another thing you'll need to take into consideration before even assuming a system with NVIDIA's GTX 1080 series is prepared for the 3080. The Ampere card sucks down a good 100 watts more than a GTX 1080 Ti. So first of all, make sure your power supply is at least 700 watts and it has two 8-pin PCI power connectors so you can use that ridiculous adapter. So guys, hopefully this video helps guide some of you into making an informed decision when it comes to upgrading because it's so easy to get swept away by the excitement around launch day reviews and assume that the high-end systems that we use typically for benchmarks is what you absolutely need. But it turns out that isn't really the case. Most games are still GPU limited at 1440p and especially at 4K, even with the RTX 3080. So provided you have a good enough platform to start with, you're hardly losing any noticeable performance by straight out replacing a GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti with an RTX 3080. And if you caught Nvidia's announcement, Jensen did mention that now is supposedly a safe time to upgrade to the RTX 3080. And you know what? He's absolutely right. This graphics card is a huge leap forward. It's just that you don't have to go through a top to bottom gaming PC facelift uh, to switch to Ampere. So that being said, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and spend responsibly. Until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one.